Um, just brief introduction. So my name is Huan Ming Chen. I work for Red Hat CTO office. Uh, this talk uh, was done by me and my coworker, Yehuda, who also works at Red Hat CTO office. Uh, Yehuda has some business to do today, so he cannot make the talk. So if you have any personal greetings, I can definitely pass along. Uh, let's see, all right, almost time. So if you don't mind, um, Raise your hands. Any of you heard about Knatives? Already get the trainings, tutorials, the past two days? Get your hands dirty with Knatives? Right, so in case your hands are still clean, the idea is here is to get your hands dirty today. If your hands are already dirty, they will be dirtier when you leave. Okay, so um, without further ado, let's just get started. Um, so Knative, the buzzword has been around for the conference for quite a while, it's a journey for those of you who already participated in the pro uh, projects. So um, we have been working on the projects for um, almost half a year, just me personally, and a longer time from somebody else. Uh, I see the committers here, maintainers here. That's a good thing. Uh, so it has been a journey, a lot of up and downs, um, buzzwords, announcements, and applications, all good things. Uh, in my opinion, that's a very good genius designs and uh, lots of uh, uh, community involvement. We have uh, weekly meetings on each of the projects and we have productivity groups and uh, the documentation working groups. This has been a very exciting moment for me. It reminds me of Kubernetes when it was between, before the 1.0 re uh, release a few years ago, just a few years ago. When it was announced, it's not, there were not even KubeCon, it was announced as the open, uh, open source summit in uh, Portland. The size of the attendance is just like this. It reminded me a few years ago when we were there. It's, the community has been growing so fast, so exponentially. This year is like 8,000 attendees uh, for the conference. So if you are looking ahead for a few years, maybe you're gonna have your own, own Knative community stronger and growing strong, and maybe um, different sessions and even its own conference. So I'm very excited with the projects. I have been with Kubernetes for a very long time, and this is going to be my own, my own personal new journey. So uh, in this talk, uh, I know most of you already heard about this uh, Knative and the three pillars of the eventing, build, and serving, and also the pipeline, which is coming up next. Um, I'm not going to talk about, uh, about uh, build. I will focus on more or less on the eventing and the serving, as well as the functions, the functions themselves. And I will also take you to have a, a field trip um, to, if you are on a mission to create to hook up your own event source to Knative, and we're gonna have the field trip to do, do of, you know, real case, real world case study of how to make that happen in a quick and dirty and easy way. And very last, I will show you a more, kind of more advanced develop, uh, de deployments, in my opinion, uh, because if you are looking at the, if you are reading the documents or examples, Knative repos, Many of the things make sense to you, but there are so many, and I want to have a single one killer application just for you to take a chance to evaluate for your own personal development. All right, Knative, this is going to be a, uh, something you have already have been reading for the past two days over and over again. Eventing, serving, and build. And uh, eventing, uh, what is eventing? It's, um, mechanisms to get your events from your source, your personal preference sources, and deliver it to the endpoints, which is your um, uh, service function. And uh, serving is the mechanisms, how the traffic are being routed, how your uh, service functions in terms of containers it gets scaled up and down and from zero to many and from many to zero as the, you know, the service function um, is the nice to do. And build, how do you get your source images, um, how do you get your source from GitHub, for example, and all the way uh, pipe down to the container images and into your registry. Again, I'm only talk about the uh, eventing and serving because uh, you know, there have been so many talks on build before, so it won't, it won't be reinforced in this session. 
So inventing, um, as you know, Knative is really built on ideas of um, use extensively leveraging the uh, customer resource definitions, CRDs. Uh, so inventing, we have a, a CRD is called a channel, subscription, and sources. So what is channel? Channel is, if you are familiar with, if you have done this development for the uh, middlewares, you know, the events buses, uh, channel is just like that. It's the place that you pull up your events from uh, your different sources. Um, for example, if you are using the cloud source, uh, just Google uh, GCP pops up, uh, AWS, QS, SNS, uh, this could be your sources. And uh, that's what the channel is for. Where do you get your sources, get your events? Subscription, which more or less is opaque. It's not like uh, we are using in the traditional pops up subscription. It's more the kind of mechanisms that binds your events channel with your serving uh, consumer. So the idea, if I'm not uh, wrong with that, the idea is that uh, if you just do a one-to-one uh, -one mapping from your uh, event source to your service function, uh, you probably don't think about a big use case for the subscription, but if you are thinking about fan deployments, if you have multiple subscriptions, if you have multiple downstream consumers of your events, then subscription is the place for you. And you could create multiple consumers for the same events, and they will just be handled uh, correctly in the events controllers. And uh, the source is, which is kind of a new thing in my opinion, because it was created um, not too long ago. The source is, is the idea that so you, um, you know, because the uh, eventing internally uh, is created with the mechanisms in mind that you have the controller to create channels and subscri create subscriptions. But there's a uh, special case, you, want to have own, you don't want to create any provisioners, you don't, you don't want to provision any consumers for your downstream, uh, downstream uh, message uh, handlers. You just want to pull out the uh, sources and you directly um, pull out the source to the consumer. So your sources are just for that purpose. So, so far we have the container source, I think the maintainer is here in the section, and the cron drop, and okay, uh, Kubernetes events, and GCP pops up, and GitHub, and even more coming up. Um, this is a very good place you can check out. You can go to the Knative eventing sources repo, and uh, find your favorite uh, sources that you can make use of, and create all your own example. And then you, CRDs is just the APIs, you have to have controllers. Remember that Kubernetes is all about definitions and resources and controllers, right? Um, that's what the Knative is uh, built upon as well. So the controllers is the mechanism, is the, actually the execution engine that brings your definition to the realization. So you declare your, your goal and then the controllers just create them for you. So the most, um, uh, if you are a controller, and this is all internal. So if you are controller developers, uh, the things come up to you is how do you provision your channel and how do you make uh, the messages pass along and to the downstream consumer. So um, the channels here are already in the reventing repos are in memory, basically just uh, do a relay from the source, image, uh, source message to the uh, downstream engine. And the G3 pops up, uh, there's something you have to do in the controller because uh, you, can, you have to create uh, your own GCP pops up subscription. Uh, if, you, if it's not there for you, uh, you basically you have to provision one. So yeah, that's what, what's the provision for. And also there's Apache Kafka, uh, which I'm not quite familiar with. So if you have good ideas how it works, uh, please read the menu. Um, which recently is a NAS, and NAS is also a CNCF hosted project. So um, there's a controller for that as well. And then, um, before we go on to the, uh, write your, give you the case study how to write your own container source, I um, have to briefly introduce the Ceph RGW. So for those of you who are already familiar with Ceph, uh, RGW stands for Redux Gateway. It's uh, something, uh, if you already use the S3 extensively, it's just like S3 on-premise. So um, as, uh, RGW can speak two languages, uh, S3 as well as Swift. Uh, it's an object store. And uh, uh, the uh, RGW has the multiple capabilities, one of which is the multi-sites. Um, basically, you have the primary sites, you have your secondary sites. Uh, uh, 
what is primary size and secondary size, and if you want to make a replication periodically or consistently, multi size is the uh, is the module that's for you. So you can define your multi size and create it, and then the, once the, there's a bucket, get some objects. The objects will be replicated to the secondary size. And uh, pop sub is a new thing. You may not see it in. Actually, you don't see it in any self release so far, but it's going to come up in the few months in the next self release. I know that, what is Naturalist, if I pronounce it correctly. In the next self release, you're going to have it. Uh, basically, a pub sub is a plug in of the multi sites because the multi sites can do replication for you, right? So instead of just doing a full blown object replication, it just creates an event. Just like the S3. On S3, you, if you subscribe to S3 uh, events, you have multiple uh, mechanisms. You can use the Lambda, you can use the SNS, SQS. Uh, Pops up is, uh, is just like that idea. So it creates events for you. Uh, so anything, you can define a topic. Basically, a topic is the created on the, at the bucket level. So if you create a topic for that bucket, anything changes to the buckets. For example, if you have a new objects uploaded, then the events will just be created for that. Uh, there's a publisher. The publisher is the IGW itself. The pub sub module will just publish the events to that uh, topic. And uh, you create a subscriber. It's subscribe, actually, subscription. It's, don't confuse it with the uh, Canadian eventing subscription. So you create a subscription for that topic, and then from that topic endpoints, it's basically REST API. You go to the REST API endpoints, and then you grab the events from there, and then you can get all the information, like which buckets receive the objects, and what's the name of the objects. So as simple as that, it's not being widely tested, and so, but I will cover, about, uh, cover that, how we are going to get it, and how if you are really falling in love with this pops up. How we are, we are going to make that happen next year, not too far. So if you want to expand your, um, this is a high level overview, if you want to event, expand your own personal eventing source, um, this could be the way to get started. On the right side of the picture is your eventing source. Uh, so in this case, it's the GW pops up. And on the left side, uh, the first block on the left side is the container source. I'm going to cover that. And basically, what the container source does is does do a periodic poll. Uh, you can set like five minutes timeouts and poll the, go to the uh, pops up API endpoint, and you're going to check if there's any events in it and poll the events if so. And then the events, once you get the events, you can just pass along to the endpoints, which is the channel. I'm going to cover that. It's basically um, endpoints and HTTP endpoints as a programmer's view. And, but internally, that's how the HTTP endpoint is resolved. Uh, the resolution goes to the event controller, eventing controller. And the subscription, as I dis uh, described, is the, basically the binding, is a contract between the, the channel and uh, the serving, the subscriber. E either that could, that could be either the service, uh, the event, those confused with the Kubernetes service, either the serving service or the routes, which is going to come up next. And uh, I did not show the picture that you can have multiple subscriptions. I think, I believe it works, and, but I have not tested it yet. And if you have more ambitious deployments, please feel free to do so and break anything and we're gonna fix it. Now, when, when I say we, I mean the Canadian maintainers. Yeah, I can be the helper. All right, so uh, I'm specifically focused on the container source. Uh, why is that? You can, have your, you can write your own container source and uh, the, if you are familiar with, uh, if you are a Kubernetes developer and you are working on the APIs, you know the, um, the hassle, right? Uh, you have to get your API object defined, you have to have the generation function works, and uh, you have to validate your APIs. That's API pass, and then you write your own controllers, the controller can handle everything correctly, creates updates, lists, watch, deletes, things like that. And after all these things are done, you are focused on your business logic, how the container, is, uh, how the events are handled and how they are delivered and uh, you know, things like that. So container source is one of those things I like very much. And you don't have to address your own APIs. You don't have to handle your, address your own controllers. You just specifically focus on your business logic. 
So if you want to have, for example, uh, in my case, the uh, RGW container source, all I need to do is go to RGW or REST API endpoints and grab the API from there and then send the code HTTP um, post, and that's it. Uh, it's as easy as that. So if you have a job, if you have a mission to create your own events bindings to handle the, your own premise or just your uh, precious event source from your internal enterprise, and if you want to get this done quick and dirty, it's not really dirty, it's actually a clean way. Um, if you want it done like in hours or days, this is the way for you. If you have more ambitious, you want to have your own event source, feel free to do it. It's going to take days or weeks. So if you are decided that the container source is, right, is the right way for you, and uh, here is the, is basically the trick is uh, um, the HTTP, how do you get the HTTP endpoints? And uh, uh, the, uh, the good thing is, um, the good news is the, the, it's called a sync, and the sync is the way that's the HTTP endpoints. It's created, uh, it's created uh, automatically for you by the eventing controller, uh, the container source controller. It's uh, either appended as a CLI option or as if you already use the sync option in your program, unfortunately. And the second option is using it as an environmental variable. So uh, in your code, if you written in Golang, it doesn't have to. You can write any of your favorite language, Node.js, Python, whatever. Um, so the, um, uh, the, can you read it? The Golang language? The, the, the Let's pretend you can read it, okay. All right, uh, the, uh, the sync uh, in this case is uh, appended as a CI option. So um, in your program, you uh, always expect that uh, the option is there and what it is is the uh, endpoints. Uh, in your program, and there you just, once you get your events, you just uh, send, uh, do a HTTP post and the uh, message is automatically uh, sent to the serving, bank, to the serving uh, uh, controller. Actually, serving has multiple controllers. Um, how that happens, you can go to the details of my code and I have the link at the bottom of the page. All right. So, um, you know, that's have your own controller, uh, have your own container source is one thing. How do, you get, how do you get this deployed? And then in this case, we have to use the YAML to, as you have been used in Kubernetes all through the years. We create a YAML for it, and uh, the thing is that you have to um, take special attention. You pay special attention is use container source as your kind, as I mentioned. If you are using some, if you have your own container, if you have your own inventing source, um, you can use that source. You have to define your own API, and you use that API objects in the kind. But in this case, it's just container source. I skip all the details, but uh, the next most significant things in the YAML is the image, right? You create your programs, you build your uh, Docker image, and then you deploy it. So we can reference this in the container source spec. And uh, the sync, in this, uh, in this YAML, the sync is, uh, spec, is part of the spec, but you don't really care how, the, uh, the sp how that spec turns into HTTP endpoints. That was automatically, automatically done by the uh, container source. Uh, it's going to be resolved because it sees this is a API, it's a API object of eventing, is a channel. So that's going to be resolved. The channel will be resolved into HTTP DNS name. Right, so what is a channel? Uh, channel is, the, as I covered before, so channel is the place that you get your messages and the messages are delivered to the consumer. So there's nothing magic here, uh, except that you have to use the in-memory channel in this case, because this is just a relay of what you have from the source to the endpoints. There's nothing in between. There's no middleware. There's no Kafka in between. So it's basically just a memory copy. It's not really a, it's kind of a copy, memory copy from the source, from your uh, events, and all the way to the serving functions. All right, subscription. Um, that's the, the very last. I believe it's the very last uh, API objects in eventing. So subscription, as, I'm, uh, as in my own words, is more like, like a binder, right? It binds the source of the channel and to the endpoints of the serving. Uh, in the serving, there's uh, some other CRDs. I use this, uh, pay special attention to a service here because we're going to swap service to something else later. Uh, but basically, the idea here is just use uh, in your subscriber, uh, use the serving, I haven't tested anything else yet, 
but it could work. And so if you are using a Kubernetes service, it may or may not work, let's just see. But most likely you have to use the serving service because that's a simple way. And if you just do a one, one point to point delivery, that's the better way to go. If you want to do one to many delivery, you want to use routes, uh, which we're going to do is later on. All right, so far for the survey, uh, for eventing. Serving, uh, that's the, uh, where the magic happens and how these uh, messages are delivered, how your sp uh, serving function container is bound and uh, uh, crashed and um, how this uh, uh, load balancing is being done and that all happens in serving. So the CRD is mostly extensively in the serving is routes and as the name suggests, it's basically the routing mechanisms. How do you get the message from the uh, source and how do you deliver to the endpoints? Um, the route could, uh, you could have multiple endpoints. So the routing mechanisms, have the magic happens in the route. And the, the configuration, configuration more or less, in my opinion, uh, is like the part. You, except that a, there's a build reference in the configuration. So you can either use a build, you can ref, refer to a build, you know, which is another pillar of, of the uh, connective. You can either can refer to a build or just, in the, my case, just use the container image. Revision, you don't really see it very often. It's more or less the internal thing. But just think about config, configuration is a git repo. And the revision is like a SHA. It's a snapshot of what you are using. So you can, you could put, uh, configuration can have multiple revisions and you can, as time progresses, you will upgrade your container image and you can have another revision. But you don't really use the revision in your YAML. It's uh, more or less the internal thing. And a service uh, for ease of use because you don't really have, you know, that's a great many use cases. You just want to do one-to-one -one delivery, one, you know, end-to-end -end delivery, you don't have multiplexing. So service is the easy way to go. It basically creates the routes and the configuration for you, and you don't really worry about how they are delivered, in, uh, they are handled internally, how they are created internally, which is a great way to get started. So this is a grossly simplified view of how serving looks like and all these CRDs. And uh, once you get upstream requests and the routes, um, the controllers, and we are just handle, decide how much traffic goes this way, how much traffic goes that way. If you only have a service, all traffic 100% goes into the one route, all right? So the configuration is the place that you define your part, define your parameters to run with that part, and that's the place the things get interesting because the, eventually your function is going to, go, going to be there. And the configuration either is a reference to a container image or is a reference to a build. Um, and so if you are, you know, I'm not coming build here, but it's something you can try by yourself. All right, the use case, as I said, is the service, and the service is the routes plus configuration. It's everything handled internally for you is beautifully done, as simple as you provide me the container image or reference to the build. So um, remember what we have used before uh, in the previous uh, uh, eventing slide, so we reference the, we don't have alarm, right? Okay, we reference the, we reference service in the, which CRD? We reference container, we reference service in which channel or subscription? Subscription, that's great. So your hands are really dirty now, okay. And if you have a, a different function, um, which in my ambiguous case, uh, ambitious case is a vision, uh, is a vision service, Google Vision Service, you simply as easy as change the image and point to a different image, and that can be uh, quickly switched. Uh, all the examples are uh, in my repo. Right. So if you have more, um, so I'm not sure if you have been to these talks, one of the talks, one of the few talks actually, because I'm uh, also talking to people. One of the few talks I went in, in the past two days is from NVIDIA, uh, which I'm a big fan of the company. It's uh, about scale, uh, scale um, how do you do a scale up, scale out actually, scale out uh, uh, image inference, right? So in their presentation, they have the nice architectures, they want to load balancing, they have multiple GPUs, and how they do the ingress and uh, egress, 
um, the good news is we can the native service all doing all this part for you. <laughs> so as, as easy as you pi. So you just need to define the routes and define how much traffic splits you need. And uh, internally, everything is already handled. I'm not sure if that's been considered or already planned out. But in case of a uh, failover, we don't really need to have a split. We would rather to try it fail, and then we try another source. That's called, um, that is the difference from splits. I'm not sure if that's being considered or just planned out, but I would love that to, ha to happen in serving eventually. Right, so if you have, want to have more advanced uh, deployments, if you want to have a scale out, uh, uh, if you have scale out inference service, and this is the way to go, you just define a route, and in the route you uh, refer to how many uh, configuration you want to have, uh, in my case, I have 50-50 splits uh, between the Google region and uh, ResNet uh, configuration. And so um, I don't have the configuration YAML here, but uh, you can go to my repo and uh, take a look. Um, basically, what this uh, the YAML tells you is that um, we, the traffic, if you have 100 uh, requests come in, 100 events come in, and there are going to be even splits between the two uh, container functions, uh, which is defined by the configuration. All right, very last thing, uh, last plus one. Um, functions, that's the core business, right? You don't really care about, you are not really the consumer, you are not really the developers of Kinetics, so you are want to use Kinetics for a, bis a great business. So function is the way the entry point for you, and uh, what this function does is a place that you define how the, fun uh, the event, uh, how it gets invoked, how you in inject your business logic. So the function entry points, uh, which is not really done, seem like a, the function is more or less like a program. The entry point is HTTP service. So you define your HTTP service, and you have to stand it up first. Its port is always 8080, I don't know why, but just, that just happens magically. And then uh, in your HTTP handler, um, so if you read the code from the bottom to up, so we have the entry points, HTTP service, 8080, port 8080, and then we define the, the handler, HTTP handler, so if you get a post message, the uh, handler is going to be invoked. In this quick and dirty case, it just prints out the message, right? Um, that's your starting point. You want to see if the uh, entry and connection is there, your events is posted. So that's the trivial uh, function. And uh, let's go deeper. Uh, so in the ResNet function, uh, which is a inference, uh, is a my inference client, and uh, let's just read the code from bottom to up. And then uh, from the entry points, your HTTP service it defines port 8080, and then you go to the events handler, which is where your beautiful logic, of business logic is, and then you go um, uh, grab that image, grab that message. In my case, the message contains the information about the buckets. Uh, remember, the, this is uh, IGW, is similar to S3, so you grab the bucket and the key name, which is the object's name, so from there, you know how to locate and how to download your objects. And then we, um, it's encapsulated, it's a skeleton, but everybody has a skeleton in the cupboard, right? All right, so in that uh, um, serving function, we pass this along to my beautiful clients, uh, ResNet clients, and to do the prediction. And this will just grab me what's, uh, I'm using ImageNet, uh, for, the, uh, for the data sets, and I uh, use the uh, 50, I believe, uh, for the model. So that's just uh, handled uh, all the way to the, uh, the prediction uh, serving, fun uh, serving uh, part, and then from there, it's just giving me back the classes, well, well what the object is. So if you are uh, familiar with ImageNet, uh, ImageNet has 1,000 classes about which objects, the, uh, which of the classes the objects fall into. And just to reinforce what you have learned, uh, basically the third use case is the same. So if you start from the bottom and the entry point is still 8080 HTTP service, and your business logic lives inside the handler, and inside the handler, you the first download the image, the, uh, the top function, and you download the RGW objects first, and then send it all the way to the Google uh, region service, and then from there you get annotations. Uh, this is different from the ResNet, which only uh, using the image NAS classes. You actually get the um, descriptions about the, it's actually, a class, you actually get the labels of the image. All right, so far so good for functions. 
And uh, this is the big picture, how we put everything together. And uh, the first step, and how, when, when everything started, the first step, you pull out your uh, event, you put something to your IGW, you just essentially just uh, put something into your IGW. And then it generates the events, uh, pops up with generates the events, and your container, container source, IGW container source, uh, pull that uh, endpoints every five seconds, and then, and then find out the events there. Let's grab that events, and post it, the events, uh, encapsulate the events in the uh, struct, uh, struct, and then post the objects into the uh, HTTP endpoints, which are then handled by your serving function. And you know, it goes through the serving in the first place, but eventually uh, being, uh, uh, being accepted by the serving functions. And there's a 50-50 split. It's a basically scale out, you know, um, because inference is not free. Once you are run out of your, uh, you know, capacity budgets, you have to scale out some way, one way or the other. It goes to the cloud, or it goes add another inference server uh, for things like that. And then you send your objects over there and get your, your results back. So that's in plain English. If you speak the native language and uh, things become uh, in this way, so the first thing you do is uh, the first um, uh, object you hit is the eventing container source, uh, obviously. Uh, I'm just covering container event source and there are some other things you can try as well. If you want to build your own controllers, build your own containers, yeah, that's the way to go. And then the IGW eventing source, we just pull out everything and post the message to um, serving. So the things, the APIs, the objects being covered here is a channel subscription. And then once everything goes to the serving, the objects being uh, used here is uh, either service or route. And then um, you eventually your eventing uh, functions, uh, your service functions uh, started. It started as a part, and it's actually started as the deployment. And then um, the traffic routed to your HTTP endpoints. Your HTTP endpoints invokes the handler, and your business logic gets started uh, wonderfully. And then when you uh, come to the deployments, which is really easy and uh, uh, quick, so you create your event source. Uh, I don't have the event source here. Uh, the CMO, you can go to my repo. And then you start the, your event source, you create the channel, and you create everything else. There's one thing I do not cover here, which if you are a developer, if you are an administrator, you have to do this by yourself, is the service entry. It's a STO API objects. It defines the egress, egress and the ingress, the policies that your event source, your service functions must comply. So in Google Vision's case, we have to put Google Vision service, uh, vision.googleapi.com as a, a service entry, HTTPS ports as a service entry. So the, your serving part, uh, your service function can go to the Google Vision to grab the, uh, to do the annotation. And that is something because, as you know, Knative is built exclusively on Istio for traffic management, so that's something you have to um, take care of. If you see your functions get blocked or your request gets denied because of the HTTP 500 or 400, I forgot the code, and maybe 400 or whatever, uh, I forgot which error code Istio gives you. And that's, that's a great chance you do not have the service entry definition yet, just create it using the examples that I have in my repo. And that's where I just create everything. The final test, uh, believe it or not, I believe the, the black cats give you good luck, and I, so I create 10 copies of them. And then I grab the cats, I create 10 copies, I put them into my RGW buckets, I give the files special names, the cat dash number, 0, 1, 2, 5, all the way to 9. And then I hopefully I can anticipate my event came here. All right, magically, I don't have screenshots, I don't have uh, videos. I believe stickers speak louder than playing the videos. So I have all the stickers here around. Just take a quick look, this time from the bottom to top, uh, from top to bottom. So. so if I look at the logs, which is the best way, in my opinion, to debug your service function, is to see what is in the logs. So if you are, um, the labels is a serving does canative does dev and configuration equals restless configuration. Remember we have the routes refers to two of the configurations. One is the restless, the other one is Google Vision. So use that label to check the logs. 
And uh, it has multiple, contain three containers actually. There's a Istio sidecar, there's a user container, and I forgot the, the other one is Q or something. Right. Oh yeah, thank you. So the, you, use the, uh, you check the logs of the user container, and in my case, I see these wonderful messages, the cat number seven being captured. Uh, it's purely random, and it depends on lots of things. There's no deterministic orders, uh, even, you know, the pop sub could get out of order, the uh, res resolution of the annotation gets out of order, things could happen. And in my case, you guess class is 286. I wish I look up at the image nets. 286 is basically the cat family, uh, so that's more or less close. I uh, actually is the right. Um, and then the second function, which magically shows me the cat number one being captured, and we give the label of cat and a score of uh, 0.99, that's great. All right, what's going to come up next? I'm running out of my time, but uh, things will happen. So this is just trivial in terms of we only have the functions. The function does nothing but annotation. You are not really uh, care about what the log tells you. You want to do, some, do something more useful in your business logic. So th things like uh, auditing, compliance, you want to detect if there's copyright issues, if there's a sensitive information in your data, and if there's anything you want to, for example, you want to get rid of you know, for just temporary cleanup. Things could happen that way. And uh, you, uh, things uh, we're going to do next is to have the metadata tagging, which means once we have the labels, we want to put some the labels on the object itself. So when you do an elastic search, which is a feature of Ceph IGW, you can search by labels. Uh, obviously, we're going to make uh, IGW available to you, easy to deploy, and going to use Rook. And for those of you who already know Rook or just interested in Rook, go to the Rook booth here, and there are friendly people over there are going to help you navigate. All right, I think that's all. Any questions? Great, we are right on time.